today is a Commodore 64 day and maybe uh, like me you've got some of these cassettes still hanging around and you want to play them on your modern PC. So what can we do? Well I'm going to show you today how to get the data on this onto the PC. So obviously you've got your cassette but we all need something to play. I've got my old uh, cassette player here, it's got a headphone uh, jack and hopefully it's in working order and the belts are working and everything on it. Then obviously you've got your audio lead. Some laptops don't have microphone jacks in them so you might have to go on to uh, Amazon and this is like a Ugreen um, USB audio uh, thing but importantly it's got the uh, microphone socket. So what we'll do is we'll plug in our sound card I'll take our audio lead and then that will be plugged into our cassette player. Uh, the signals on these are pretty strong uh, so it shouldn't need the volume to be too high. So obviously let's put the cassette in. Yeah I don't know what happened to the back of my uh, but uh, the back compartment's fallen out and oh and that's broken as well. Uh, yeah I know. So We've got all of that, that's the hardware side of it, but let's now move over to the PC and I will show you the software that we're gonna be using. So first off, we need a program called Audacity, which is an audio editor and is what's gonna be recording our sound from the cassette. Next is a program called Audio Tap, and what this does is converts the WAV file that we'll produce and creates it into a tape file tap then to check the recording is good and the files are okay on that tap file we use the program tap clean now it's a command line tool but don't worry there is a tap clean front end that you can download as well and i recommend that you just use the front end version uh, because it's nice and easy now, before we start, we need to go into the settings for the audio. I go in via this icon over here and then more volume settings. So I need to look at the input. So we scroll down a little bit. I make sure that it's set to the USB device uh, that I've got plugged in. And then I click on the little right arrow next to it. Now there's a couple of options here. We're gonna make sure that we're on DVD quality and the input volume is at 100%, that should be fine. Now importantly, we need to make sure that audio enhancement is turned off. By default, it's on, and it tries to help improve speech or the music that it's gonna be recording, but we're recording data, and we want it to be set off because we just want the raw data. Back in Audacity, we just need to go to Audio Setup, just go to recording device, make sure that that's selected correctly as well. Yep, USB. And then we're going to choose mono because these cassettes are recorded in mono anyway. The data is not in stereo. So why waste an, uh, another channel? So I hit play on the cassette player and record in Audacity. And then we just wait for the data to then appear. So we'll know that we'll start to receive data because the waveform will be really strong. There we go, it started coming in now. And yeah, if you're an audio engineer, you'll be probably saying, wow, this signal is way too hot, you're clipping. Don't worry, because it's data, this is fine. Now the light blue um, is going up and down a little bit. So I know that this signal isn't too strong thing to do is to experiment obviously if it doesn't work then just try increasing the volume a little bit or decreasing it you should be looking for a signal that looks something like this and we've recorded everything on this tape now you'll notice that there's silence at the end and that's a good indication that the tape has finished so we go to file export and then choose wave don't select MP3 because that compresses it and will lose data. Give it a name. Well, I've done this before, this cassette, so I'm just gonna choose the same name again and then choose save. Yes, I want to overwrite. 
and then we've got our WAV file. Next we go to Audio Tap. I've already extracted this into its own folder and we open up the main program. Now we don't want to convert to a tap file. We want to create a tap file. So we choose that option there. And then we select that we've got our WAV file already. Hit OK. Then it will ask for the WAV file. There it is, what I've recorded. And then it's going to ask, OK, what do you want to save it as? And this is the tap file that is going to be created. So I'll just give it the same name. There we go. It's all done nice and quick. Now let's check and see if that recording was any good. So I'm going to open up Tape Clean and we need to go into the bin folder with this one and the icon, there it is. Load it up and this is the interface for uh, Tap Clean. So I go to Open. I need to find that tape file. It's my Test 2 folder, there it is. And I click on Open. Now we click on test and what that will do very quickly, it will show us some information. Now, don't worry about where it says overall result failed. Most of the time it says failed, but the important thing that we need to look at is the recognized and the recognized is at 99%. So that is a really good recording. I'm happy with that. I've never quite seen 100, but 99 is pretty good for me. Now there's loads of information down below. Uh, you've got the header pass, so that that passed as well. Uh, the recognition was 99. It says it's failed, but 99 is pretty good. And the checksum was 12 out of 12, so that's good. It means that it understood the files. And importantly as well, there were zero errors on the read test, so that was good. I think we've got a good recording of this. So let's open up uh, Vice and let's try loading up our game. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bin folder and I'm looking for my C64SC. Right, okay, and then we're going to attach our cassette. We need to find our tape file again. And then, as it's a Commodore 64, I need to type in load. Press play on the tape. Uh, I'll go down to the bottom and select tape there and push play. Now let's just wait a while and see if this works. And there we have it, the game is loaded. Now, really, I should have done part one instead of part two because I can't get any further in this game now. I don't know what to do. But importantly, this C64 tape has now been converted digitally into a tape file and we can play it in our Commodore 64 emulator. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. So what are you waiting for? Go grab those Commodore 64 tapes now.